Hey everyone, welcome back to Doing Cody Things. It is Tuesday, that means Movie Tuesday! So we are here again today with two movie reviews for you, and pickings were slim for the new movies. I looked at the movie list and there was like two movies that I had not seen in theaters yet. And one of them was Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which I do not care to see at all because I'm just really not ready to go see more hybrid dinosaurs already. I feel it's really played out and I have a whole list of reasons why I don't want to go see that movie. But I'm not going to share those with you, so I'll share with you what I did go see and I went and saw Ocean's 8. So we're going to do a spoiler free review on Ocean's 8. And starting with that, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and then we'll get started on this review. So Ocean's 8 is very, very much like any other Ocean's movie that you've seen. Uh, that I can speak for because I haven't ever seen the old ones with the Rat Pack. I know Sin, my dad is, you know, pissed at me and he doesn't even know it because I never saw it and that was his favorite, favorite group. But I've seen the newer three with George Clooney, Brad Pitt and all them and I liked them all to be completely honest and that there is no difference for the newest one. Ocean Date was completely solid all the way around. It is a genuine Ocean's movie. Like you are gonna get everything in this that you get from any of the other Oceans movies. It's not a remake, it's actually more of a sequel, not sequel, it kind of just, it's in a shared universe. So um, the characters do know each other, uh, some of them anyways, and there was several cameos in the movie that you can look forward to. I heard that all the original cast from Oceans 11 was supposed to be making a cameo, but I only saw three. If you see more, let me know down in the comments of where I should have been looking. But, uh, I, like I said, I only saw three. I'm not going to say which ones I saw or where to look for them, because like I said, it is a spoiler review. But it is very much an Ocean's movie. You're going to get all the slideshow-esque uh, transitions. You get the music. You get the look, at the look through the cameras. You get the hacking. You get everything that is in an Ocean's movie. And that's why I loved it, to be honest. It's an all-female cast, which, you know, is just the complete opposite of what all the other ones were, which I don't have a problem with. They all are incredible actresses, for the most part. I'm not going to put Rihanna in an incredible actress category. Um, but Kate Blanchett, Sandra Bullock, they're, they're top tier, and they did phenomenal in the movie. So uh, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10, a solid 8 out of 10. You don't need to see this movie in theaters. Check it out when it comes out or when it hits that hits Netflix or whatever. Uh, you can go see it in theaters if you want to. It's still very solid, maybe worth the money. Um, but that's all I really have to say about Ocean's 8. So. Next, we're going to go on to a more classic movie. And this movie was a Best Picture winner that I never saw, which is The King's Speech. Uh, the King's Speech is on Netflix right now. If you guys notice, there's a trend here that I normally watch movies that are on Netflix because it's just easier and they have a ton of content on there. But I watched The King's Speech. Full disclosure, this is my second try running through this movie. I tried to put it on before and I just, it was crawling for me at the time, like a crawling speed, and I just couldn't handle it at the time, so I just shut it off within like the first 10 minutes probably. But this time I decided to tough it out and watch the whole thing and I was not disappointed. It is a very solid movie. Uh, that year I remember picking a different Best Picture category, but I hadn't seen this in its defense. But I still, I don't know which Best Picture I was going for. I'll have to look it up and leave it down in the description for you guys. But very solid movie. Colin Firth put on an incredible performance. Uh, Helena Bowen Carter, she is surprising me. She was actually in Ocean's 8 too, so both of these movies share that actress. But she put on a great performance as well. A uh, very heartfelt story. Uh, it's about a king who has a stutter, and he ha he's a king. He's got to make speeches. So it's about his development with his vocal uh, teacher, I guess you would say and they're growing together. It's two completely different ends of the spectrum. You know, royalty up here, and then, you know, the common, he's Australian, I believe, down here. And they really have to break down those barriers uh, before they can even start to, to work with each other and get past this stammer that he's accumulated over the years. Very solid movie. I would probably give this around an 8.5. Very good movie, but it's one of those movies that you're gonna watch once and probably never have to watch again because you saw it. 
Uh, it is a Weinstein film for those of you who are very critical of the Weinstein company as of late with all their drama, but they used to put out quality movies all the time, rarely missed, and uh, this is no exception. So. Give out that give that movie a uh, check out. It's on Netflix, like I said. If you haven't seen it, watch it. If you've seen it, you probably don't need to see it again, which is you know easy peasy. But those are my two movies for this week's two uh, movie Tuesday. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell if you want to see more movie Tuesdays on Tuesday. And uh, as always, see you guys tomorrow.